So the question is going to be regarding academic standards at Beacon Schools. I was an uh, Ontario certified teacher um, in the process of transition. I have had the opportunity to work at Beacon Schools. Uh, have seen all the challenges that students face. Um, my personal kind of issue with academic standards is, and how much this relates to this question, is, is when it comes to EQAO is that all that's taken account is the numbers. So you have uh, nothing else is taken into account when you're looking at those scores. So the situation that the different students are coming from, uh, home situations, what's going on in their lives, um, what resources and that that they have, none of that seems to matter. It's all just about the numbers. But uh, I know there's definitely issues uh, with funding and how things and that are calculated, so I'll give you the context. There are several elementary and secondary schools across the city and all school boards, which are labeled Beacon Schools, because they have a high concentration of students from low-income backgrounds and or who do not speak English as a first language. Recently, the Fraser Institute conducted a study of schools in Ontario and ranked them based on their performance at EQAO tests. They also made public information about the average annual parental income of the schools and the percentage of ESL students and special needs students. Aha, uh -huh, that totally goes against what I just said. Several of the schools that rank below average have large populations of Muslim students, and so these results have had a serious impact on many Muslim communities. One of the schools which ranked the lowest in Ottawa, getting 0.4 out of 10, was Pinecrest Public School, where for years now the majority of students have failed the EQAO, and in 2010, over 70% of students' EQAO tests were below the provincial standard. We are aware that school, the, school admin, the school's administration has been working hard to improve the situation, including raising funds from sources other than the provincial government in order to improve the school's library and other problems at the school. Although it has been the custom to blame the low performance of children and youth at these schools on the students themselves or their parents, it has been demonstrated by the Fraser Institute report the schools with, which actually have lower annual parental incomes are exceeding, exceeding schools with relatively higher annual parental incomes. So it seems clear that this is not the case. At this point, it appears that the provincial government's approach to solving these problems has not been systematic, often leaving it up to individual schools to apply for provincial funding to improve their schools, such as the Urban Priority Schools Fund or the School Turnabout, Turnaround Fund, which not all the schools that apply are awarded. Considering that a good education is key to breaking cycles of poverty and criminality in low-income communities, it would seem that ensuring that students in Beacon schools are meeting and exceeding provincial standards should be a priority of the Ontario Ministry of Education. So the questions are, are you aware of the EQAO results of schools in your particular riding? And in turn, what does your party propose to do to raise the academic standards of schools where the majority of students are failing the EQAO? So Pavishev, just go back for a minute. Can you just um, briefly explain for people who probably graduated post EQAO generation what EQAO is? Because basically at this point, it's something that every student is go is is actually has to do. So it happens at third grade, sixth grade, ninth grade, and grade twelve, and it's basically looking at um, literacy levels. So numerical literacy, that's mathematics, and then uh, literacy, so that's language development, speaking, writing, reading, and that's in every school all through the province. Thank you. So the person who will be addressing this question first will be Alex Hill. Uh, and Pinecrest School is in your writing. Yeah, yes it is. Um, I have to admit, I generally don't spend my weekends looking up uh, EQAO results uh, for schools in my writing, but, but I did some research earlier today. And one of the striking things was the disparity in terms of academic performance. Uh, Ottawa Western PN has some of the worst performing schools, not only in Ottawa, but in Ontario, and some of the best performing schools. So you have a school like Pinecrest, which has an average of 0 0.4 uh, on a scale of 0 to 10. And then schools like Knoxdale Public School, which have 9.1. Uh, there's a clear correlation between uh, performance on these tests and the cultural and religious backgrounds of students. Um, surprisingly, or maybe not so surprisingly, income doesn't have much to do with it in terms of the uh, income of parents. In fact, uh, schools with populations of students who have parents with lower incomes, um, all else being equal, perform better than schools uh, where students have richer parents. Um, so clearly, the, the income uh, of or the background of these students economically isn't uh, the driving factor. Um, instead of saying what we would do to improve 
scoring on standardized tests. I would question the validity and usefulness of these tests in the first place. Um, there's been plenty of research uh, bringing into question uh, discrimination when it comes to the types of questions being asked. They're generally questions that Western, Caucasian individuals would be more likely around to answer, to know the answers for it. Um, there's a lot of studies that suggest people of color perform worse on these tests because they are biased against uh, racialized individuals. Uh, when you look at the total costs of administering these tests, it's in the neighborhood of $100 million. Uh, we could be investing that money in support staff, um, more counselors and psychologists in schools, um, more literacy programs if we're really concerned with literacy. It seems absurd to me that we would be judging somebody such as myself who was born and raised in Ottawa and had the privilege of um, rather wealthy upbringing that we should hold somebody like myself to the same standard as a recent uh, refugee from Somalia or Afghanistan. Um, so another thing that I think it's important to do is acknowledge the cultural and religious differences of student bodies in different areas. And one way to do that is to actually empower principals and teachers at the local level to do what they think is best for their students in their classrooms rather than trying to um, mold the entire student body around some sort of provincial one-size-fits-all uh, curriculum. So the next responder will be Wally Farah. Uh, thanks, Shabby. Um, I think uh, Alex, I think uh, Alex mentioned a very, very good point. The validity of the test is questionable. Uh, and I don't know if you guys remember, uh, but uh, this test was brought in by the Harris government. Um, as an indicator myself, as a teacher, uh, I have a lot of questions about about this test. And uh, I know I, remember, I I don't know if you know this. There's this author, Canadian author, who writes uh, curriculums, uh, David Pratt, who said, "What happened to us? You know why we always talk about uh, arithmetic, uh, the three R's, you know, arithmetic, math, and those things, rather than talking about care, concern, and collaboration." And 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 I think. The test, uh, what the test does is, uh, is there's a lot of complexity you know, and it's a lot of uh, questions, but it does measure something. And as uh, my uh, Alex mentioned, and, and also Shelby, and also the, uh, uh, the report that we heard, um, there's a disparity. And, and, and the, to go back to the question, in Ottawa South, it's the same thing as in the Ottawa West. There's a clear disparity between the schools. There are schools that are really meeting the standard or exceeding in the writing, and 50% of them are not meeting and not are failing. And it's consistent in the last five years. And so, so the, 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 the issues is not only about the test. There are other things that are, uh, that are, not, that are not being taken care of that's causing the problem. Um, so for example, the education funding formula. Uh, which uh, is more concerned about numbers rather than the unique needs of each school. Um, so that, that uh, you know, on an NDP government, what we're going to do is we will have a complete review of that funding formula. So that the formula, and we will uh, aspire to make it a formula that's flexible enough to uh, take care of the unique needs of each school. Uh, you, um, for example, like Featherstone Public School, which my kids went last year, uh, we had a class of, uh, like my daughter who is a French immersion, she, she, their class was 34 students. And when I asked, uh, and, and the average that the government of Ontario uh, has been talking about that each class should be limited to 23 in the elementary panel, 23 students, uh, it didn't work for that school or for that class. Uh, because of when I asked that question to the principal and said why my daughter's class is 34 students rather than 23, uh, as the government has, uh, you know, uh, planned for, they, uh, uh, the principal told me it's because of the education funding formula, which doesn't care about what unique needs are in that school, rather than the overall number of the, of the students. So, an, an NDP government will also look at the test itself, and we're going to look at the validity. So, rather than maybe taking, you know, every student taking the, 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 uh, the, the, the test, we're going to sum up. We're going to maybe attest to that, because the, the test does something. It measures something, and it should be there, but it shouldn't be the way it is now. So, we will uh, maybe revise it and make it 
like sample, you know, we'll test the sample of the students so that we know if our curriculum and, uh, uh, and, and the teaching methods and, and the material and the resources that we're putting on is working. So, uh, but we only need to sample it, not like every student's participating. We also need to look at other factors, uh, 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 the, the other things that not only the score or like the marks, but we have to look at what the schools are doing that are also making our like the care and the concern and the collaboration and all those other things that the students are learning. We have to look at those things and and and, and report them rather than just uh, these numbers. Um, so uh, I would say uh, an NDP government will review the funding uh, formula so that we will have a funding formula that will bring more resources into our uh, into the classroom, uh, and also we will review the test itself to uh, uh, make sure that it, it's valid and it is representative of uh, what it's doing. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, this is an issue that is very close to my heart. I'm uh, the parliamentary assistant to the Minister of Education, so obviously I spend a lot of time working on these files. So I really uh, appreciate the question uh, that, is, that is asked. Uh, we have come a long way in our education system in the last eight years. Um, I don't know how many of you know, but uh, there was a recent uh, a ranking done by the Organization of Economic Cooperation and Development as to where Ontario school system is. Would you be surprised I tell you that we're ranked in top five in the world? We're in the same category as Japan, Singapore, Finland, South Korea, and Ontario. Not Canada, Ontario. In fact, if you put all of Canada, it brings us down. So we've come a long way in terms of where we now compete globally. Our graduation rates are higher. We've gone from 68% to 81%. Our EQAO test scores are up, and our students are doing better and better. Now, that doesn't mean that our job is done, that there's nothing more to do. Of course, there's more to do, because 81% graduation rate is not good enough. We need to aim for 85% and higher. We need to make sure that our children are getting the best possible education. That's why the Liberal Party brought in the full day kindergarten program. We're the first jurisdiction in North America to offer a full day kindergarten program. And after we started to implement this, we're already seeing some incredible results that are coming out in terms of the four and five year olds in that program and their, their learning skills. It's amazing, some of the studies that are coming out. And as we're enrolling the full day kindergarten program, Guess where we started, decided to start from? From communities and schools which are located in low-income neighborhoods. Because we realized that that's where we need to pay attention first. So in my community, in the riding of Ottawa Center, the two schools which started full-day kindergarten last year were Cambridge Street uh, Public School, which is right located in the downtown core. A lot of new Canadians live in that community. A lot of working poor families, both mom and dad are working, right? They don't have the resources available to them to make sure that their children have all the resources coming from a higher income family background to give them that extra edge to make sure that they continue to learn. The second school was W.E. Gowling, a public school located in Carlington community of Maryville. Same type of circumstance of the Caldwell community, the Ottawa community housing uh, are located just around the corner. Uh, and a lot of uh, immigrant families live in that neighborhood. What the EK, EQAO test also allows us to do is, is to uh, adjust our funding to make sure that we continue to fund and meet the needs. It gives a good barometer to the government. If the testing does not exist, you would not know where, which schools and which communities to focus on. The other interesting thing is when the OECD did the uh, analysis and uh, put Ontario in top five in the world, the category they, they said that Ontario did the best was in narrowing the gap between those who come from highly educated families, those children who come from highly educated families, and those children who come from very little education. And that's where they said that Ontario has done an incredible job of job in narrowing that gap, that pretty much 
those two students from those two very different backgrounds are performing at the identical level, at a pretty high level, which is very exciting. We also introduced homework help, e-learning for students because, again, to make sure that after school hours you've got help, and um, a funding programs like Pathways to Success. How many know you know Pathways to Success? Around Pathways to Education. Pathways to Education. Thank you. That program to ensure that again we're helping students from all different backgrounds. Now this is what we want to do next to make our scores even better if we are re-elected on October 6th. One of the things we want to do is create a science strategy. We've been focusing a lot on literacy and numeracy lately. Uh, we've invested a lot of dollars in that but our test scores are showing that kids are not doing that well in science and math. So we want to have a very focused science strategy. Now politicians are not going to develop those strategies. Remember that specialists who are academics, who are specialized in education, they are the ones who are going to be developing so that we can start implementing those in our school. We also want to offer voluntary summer school for our children. Because again, there are differing levels of learning capabilities. A lot of kids not don't do well in regular school. We want to give those parents the option to send their children to a on a voluntary basis to school in the summer months. A lot of parents don't have the money to send kids to summer camps, right? So this could be a good way of making sure that children are getting good education during the summer months and it will be obviously totally funded by your taxes so you there's no extra fees involved. Lastly, what we also want to do is introduce after-school programming for children aged 6 to 12. We know that's a big issue. A lot of parents don't have the money uh, or have difficulties to have money for daycare services. Uh, a lot of time we have child concern as to what we're going to do with our young, uh, young people after school hours. So we want to start offering um, after-school programming in all our schools for children aged 6 to 12. These type of strategies, we are confident, are going to continue uh, to not only stress the importance of education, but also increase the test scores and really help uh, children coming from marginalized communities, from communities from new immigrant, uh, new Canadian backgrounds, and make sure that they have equal chance to succeed in our education system. Thank you.